All right, hey guys, welcome back again. Um, I just wanted to share some quick tuning results and how to. This time I'm actually gonna run down. I forgot to grab my target last time and actually bring it up and show you guys uh, the groups and whatnot. But I was gonna kind of wrap that all up into a tuning video later on. Um, so I've done a little tuning today since I've gotten home from work with these 24 grain slugs. Um, see here, let me grab my phone here so I can make sure I get these in, in frame. I'll try to give you a shot on my camera here. Probably not going to be able to see these too well. Um, try and hold it still there for you. Not very good lighting in here. Let's turn the light on. So, maybe, hopefully, you guys can see these. Without spilling them on the floor. All right. So these are the same 24.2 grain flat back slugs we were shooting yesterday, um, or I was shooting yesterday, and wanted to do a little bit of fine tuning to see if I couldn't get these slugs to shoot uh, as good as some of the other slugs I've shot. So what I do is, as you can see, I'm set up with my chronograph. Um, and I've got my tools laid out. I've got a two millimeter for my regulator adjuster. I've got the Allen key because on the bullpup I have to take the stock off to access all of my tuning options. And then I've got my little 1.5 millimeter for uh, adjusting the Allen screw on the hammer adjust wheel on the power wheel. And why I'm doing this versus just clicking through it is because the clicks are a little bit they're, they're substantial jumps, right? They're intended to be power jumps, right? I'm not looking for a power jump. I want to tweak my velocity maybe three to five feet per second and see what difference that makes. And so that's why I will actually pull this out of the stock, do maybe a quarter turn or less with this Allen on the hammer screw back here and see what re results that yields. The other thing I did since yesterday is I turned my regulator up um, now at about 160 bar. Um, go ahead and get a shot of this if I can do so without tapping the camera like I did yesterday. All right, so we're sitting at about 160 bar now. And what I noticed, and this is one thing uh, Ted talks about this in an old video that he made about tuning for pellets, right? and getting uh, harmony within the gun. Um, and there's a sound that the gun makes that's unique um, when it's really tuned in well and it's getting efficient power and accuracy. And uh, that's really kind of the sweet spot. And I was always curious if that's the same, you know, overall tuning process with slugs, just maybe a little bit more finicky and so I tuned my reg up to about 160. Um, if you guys watched my last video, you saw the groups that they were shooting. I didn't bring the, the target up and I apologize for that, but those groups were about maybe three quarters of an inch. Um, not really as good as I was hoping for and maybe was the result of me missing the paintballs quite a bit. Um, but, you know, in a lot of the other guys' videos, um, I think Matt from uh, South America, I forget your channel, Matt, I'm sorry, uh, but Matt Dubber has some really awesome tuning um, explanations as to why and how this is all being done. Um, and so that's where I got a lot of this from. But I made a small regulator pressure increase. In my last video, I think I mentioned when I showed the chronograph results, uh, you know, the results showed an indication that maybe my hammer spring tension was a little too high for the reg pressure or for the slug that I was shooting at that reg pressure. Um, so what I did, because I want to keep shooting these 24 grains, but I'd like to keep the same speed if possible, but use the air more efficiently. I don't want a loud muzzle blast. I want a nice quiet 
like my like it made when I was shooting pellets, optimized and shooting very well. Um, so I'm looking for that same sound quality up from the gun. Um, that sound that it makes tells me how much extra air is being used and how violent that whole process is potentially. Um, so got my scope cam hooked back up. Sorry, it's again, it's like 97 degrees with like 85, 90% humidity, so I'm sweating profusely. I apologize. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't fog up the camera. Um, but we'll shoot another. I got this tuned right now to 900 feet per second, and from 9 to 915, both seem to shoot really well. 900 seemed to do a little bit better. Um, the main reason I like this speed is more due to energy. That's what I'd like to get these 22 slugs up to. But I'm totally happy with 850 to, you know, 940 if whatever gives me the best results. I'm not going to be a speed snob. But I like to try to start my tuning process in and around the 900 mark. So I can go up a little bit or go down a little bit and start in that general area. Um, but these just so happen to be loving 900 right now. So hopefully I'm going to turn my camera on. <laughs> We're going to shoot a group and the group will correlate with what I've, what I'm talking about and what I've done. So I turned my hammer spring down just a little bit, like one, one full turn from what you can access, uh, off the side of the stock there. So it was you know, from maybe about this position to this position was how much I turned it down on the hammer spring. Um, then I turned my reg up from about 155 to 160, about dead on. And that gives me about the same velocities. Um, I haven't put it on max yet, but I did notice that 900 today with this tune compared to 900 yesterday. 900 yesterday had a little bit of a bark to it. 900 today sounds like a pellet gun, um, which is going to reduce the amount of muzzle blast and turbulent air behind the slug, which I think is, is going to be uh, beneficial for shooting long range as well as just air consumption. So let me go ahead and get this fired up again and I'll stop talking camera went off. Okay. The other thing I wanted to apologize for too is yesterday I did not uh, I didn't film this at 240 frames per second. I forgot to change my camera settings so I apologize for that. Uh, that was in 120 frames so you probably didn't get as clear of a view. I was trying that out just to see because I get better resolution at 120. Um, if that would make for a better viewer experience or not. And it seemed like it was just a little quick. So um, today I didn't put up a fresh target for this. This is my tuning target. And I'm gonna go grab this and show it and kind of just explain it um, on camera with you guys. But essentially I'm just picking anywhere there's an X on the target and shooting a three shot group at it, making an adjustment and keep going until I see improvement or you know either improving results or degrading results and uh, I got to some pretty good results and so I just wanted to stop make a video and share it with you guys and I, I kind of wish I would have done the whole thing the whole process and I might do another video of the whole process step by step uh, in case any of you guys are lost on it
goodness. Sorry, guys. Camera's off. So that was not reading on my chronograph for some reason. Well, wouldn't you know it, my batteries died on my Bluetooth thingy. So the last velocity I had on that was 890. Still on the regulator. All right. So at least we'll have some scope cam footage of that. I apologize, my, uh, my Bluetooth box on my chronograph died. So my, my uh, chrono results aren't showing up. But that was at 890. It should be between 890 and 900. Uh, I'm going to turn this up to the A setting and do another group real quick. Sorry about that. Um, so we just shot, I just did three shots. My, uh, I'm actually sweating so much, I'm fogging up the inside of my uh, scope adapter here. So <laughs> it's getting hard to see. Um, I'll try and get a couple more shots real quick. We did three shots real fast. The group seemed to open up a little bit when I increased the velocity. Um, since I just turned the reg up, there may be a slight break-in period as uh, I believe there's a little Delarin piece inside the regulator that the, the set screw um, seals against and so each time you make an adjustment it might take a uh, certain amount of shots for it to reseat and be perfectly consistent again um, so anyway Good God, I'm sweating. I left the camera recording and just start a new, new shot cycle because that's going to take forever to edit. Right. It's definitely, golly, definitely getting a little louder. And it looks like my rig pressure is dropping back down to about 155. So, um, like I said, I'm go ahead and fire this last shot real quick just to make it, make it even. Alright. So, when I started this video, this was uh, right at 160. Now it's creeping a little bit below. It's probably at about 158. Um, so if you guys are having the same same experience with your dream lines, um, it's not that big of a deal. Well, at least I don't think it's that big of a deal. Um, Turn this off real quick. So this is how, well, I'm just gonna take this off and talk to you guys and readjust this real quick. Um, but this is basically what my tuning process will entail. 
So I noticed that my reg went down, back down to 155. That seems to be pretty consistent for this regulator. Um, to move upwards usually takes me at least no less than three adjustments to get the regulator like set to a new pressure. Um, and sometimes even going down, uh, I'll notice that. And so the other thing that's kind of interesting, this is a huge reason guys why I put a barrel band on this really expensive gun that I 3D printed, or like on the, I put a 3D printed barrel band on a very expensive gun. Um, and it's because of stuff like this. So I just popped this thing out of the stock. I'm gonna set it back in here. I got my rig up. I actually, it's a little over 160 now, but I'm not gonna worry about that because it'll creep back down again in about, at least within the next fill. And then after that, it should be good to go. Um, so for all my testing, I know I could just drop this back in the chassis, um, but for accuracy testing, I want my harmonics to be as, as similar as possible from one time to the next time. So that's why I'm bolting my chassis, bolting the stock back on, is because I want the interaction from the chassis of the rifle and everything like that to be the way it is going to be when I shoot it in the field. Um, all right, so we got the rig back up 160. What caught my eye was my velocity started dropping down to 907. On hammer setting A, I should be at about 915. So we'll take a shot. I'll have to read it out to you guys since you can't see it. And then we'll see um, what the result is here. Nine seventeen. Okay. So what I'm talk what I'm trying to explain is is actually working out while I'm on camera. So um, my reg's back at the pressure I want it set at. I might have to do this another time to get it to really actually stay there from one fill to the next. But um, to me, that's that's not a super huge deal. I understand this is dealing with some extremely high pressure. So um, we'll fire another shot. Let me turn my camera back on. Sorry guys, I'm new to all of this. You're gonna have to forgive me. Um, ah, there I go, I zoomed in too far and shut the camera down. That is one thing I guess you gotta worry, or not worry about, uh, be aware of. You gotta be aware that you can't zoom in too far. Otherwise your camera lens will actually hit the little focus thing inside of there. Sorry, I'm gonna have to restart my camera. Every now and then when the zoom lens hits something, it won't focus again properly until it's turned off. 3.237, that's good enough. All right. Oh, good grief. Hit record. Already got it in there. Gun level. Alright. 9.17 again. A little over the last one. And that's it for that. Alright, so due to me not being incredibly well prepared for this video, uh, I'm not gonna, 
I'm just going to shut up and go grab the target and talk you guys through what I've, what I've been getting and uh, hopefully it'll make sense. Um, I'm going to throw a couple more slugs in here real quick. I'm going to throw three in here. Do one last three shot group. Um, and we're going to do this back at power setting B. And this should yield 900 feet per second. Okay, if we're still. And my reg's creeping back down again. Don't you know it? But we're also almost out of air. So I'm just going to fire this last shot just to get out of here. And. Oh, what the hell? The camera's already set up. And it's still rolling. that shot last shot was worth it um, so basically that's the result that's the sweet spot I found is power level I guess I'll show you to you guys so that you can understand some of my confusion when I'm calling out power levels um, so if I turn this wheel to max whoops to max and I look at the letters on the back side here, that's A, even though A doesn't line up. When it lines up with A, it's actually B. Um, so I'm shooting on C to get 900 feet per second. A, or I'm sorry, I'm shooting on C, which looks like B, to give me 900 feet per second. And I'm shooting on the B settings, giving me about 914. Um, whew. so anyway that's that's kind of my that's how I tune my guns um, or at least that's how I'm tuning this gun the impact has some other features that are very cool where you can actually control the valve timing and whatnot and so you can get a lot more detailed and specific with that with this you're kind of having to jump back and forth between your reg pressure and your hammer spring and just get that in perfect unison and uh, you know that's going to change a little bit depending on which weight slug you're shooting um, the tightness the fit in the barrel whether it's a 217 or a 218 it's probably you know can have an effect on your harmonics all that kind of stuff so it's definitely going to take some fiddling with on the end user um, side but before I make this video too long, let me go get my target real quick. I'll be right back. <sighs> Alright guys. So here's the target we were just shooting at. Um, so basically these are the X's I was talking about. Each one of these little spots we'll just pick as a point of aim. Fire a three shot group, sometimes more, at the same spot. And we'll check to see what the... Uh, what the differences are. So here's a three shot group on this one. Here's a three shot group here. Here's a three shot group here. Here's another three shot group here. I ran out of ammo on this, had to refill. Get out of here, mosquito. I'll kill you. Um, and then I kept going and I didn't see any really drastically improving results um, and so what I did next was then I changed my reg pressure I bumped my reg pressure up from 155 to 160 and uh, started playing with the hammer spring then I started getting groups like this and then this was on a higher power and I wound up settling at around 900 this was my best best consistent performer um, at 160 bar with that hammer spring tension. Um, so then on 
video that we just went through, we went through and we shot these groups here. This opened up quite a bit, tuned them back up to higher power, put it back to this setting, and I got the same group pretty much. So, um, that's really nice. The other thing is, is all these shots are within a quarter of an inch of my, uh, my point of aim pretty much as far as the group orientation goes. And that's really what the barrel band was all about. Um, I had some comments, you know, you maybe got a dirty barrel. Um, you know, some of the simple things, you know, gun maintenance. And these things, these are things that get overlooked and forgotten for sure. Um, so it's definitely something to keep in mind is your, your gun maintenance itself. But what my issue was with this particular rifle um, is I was getting drastic POI shifts um, from very subtle things. I would set my gun down to refill it, make a regulator adjustment, and my POI would go from hitting here, all of a sudden my next group's hitting right here, shooting the same exact group, just two and a half inches over. Um, you know, that's, that's not a reliable gun in my opinion. Um, from a hunting standpoint. If you're a bench shooter exclusively, then that's probably not gonna be an issue. But if you're planning on walking through the woods, this is a bullpup, this may be carried, uh, you know? So I, I don't think that having that level of POI shift, especially at 50 yards, two inches at 50 yards is pretty, pretty uh, unacceptable, I think. Um, and I tried multiple things, and it wasn't just this barrel, it was my 25 barrel did the same thing. Um, and that's why I felt it necessary to put a cheap piece of plastic on the front of my gun. Um, you know, I fought with this, that's why I wound up making my own. I think this one looks better than the other alternative that's available out there. Um, and, you know, it, it suits me. My gun, you know, I've, I've picked this up. This is the third day, in a, yeah, third day in a row now. I picked my gun up, and it was, you know, within reason. It was within a half inch of where the crosshairs were. And that's fine. I don't, I don't, it doesn't have to put the next bullet, you know, if I, if I set this thing down for two days, put it in a case and whatnot, it doesn't literally have to go through the exact same hole that I fired my last bullet from through. Um... But within a half inch would be nice. Uh, within three quarters of an inch would be nice. That's still that's still hitting your game. That's hitting your target um, if you're hunting. That's putting that animal down with a clean hit. Um, two and a half inches is a maiming hit or a clean miss. Uh, so barrel band, and you know what? It made my gun. More, more consistent. I can case this. I can set it down inside, like you guys just saw. I just took this thing out of the stock, changed the regulator pressure, and that—that's my POI change. That's that's doable. I can live with that. Um, that's not. That's not you know anything for me to be concerned with. At 100 yards, it'd show up a little bit more, but you know I, I'm going to be re-verifying my zero if I'm making changes like this to my gun before I shoot at 100. So, um, but you know, if I'm just sitting here playing around with my gun, doing some tuning and all of a sudden I see, it, you know, a starling land in the yard and I go to take a whack at him and I miss by three inches, um, that's not good. That happened to me yesterday. I was, that's what made me print this. Um, and that wasn't the first time that's happened. Uh, so anyway, that's the barrel band rant. <laughs> but this is the, you know, this is just, I just wanted to take a minute and explain to you guys my harmonics or my tuning uh, theory. Um, and this isn't really my tuning theory. This is, this is a tuning theory that I've read about and heard from others doing and having a lot of success with. And it makes a lot of sense to me. And it's the same thing that we were all doing with, with pellets as well. So, um, hopefully this gives you guys, um, something to work with 
for getting your own slug results um, if you haven't already gotten them already. So with that, I'm going to cut this video short because I am sweating to death. Uh, maybe not literally, but it, it's, it's hot and I'm thirsty and I want to go back inside. So, <laughs> all right. Later, guys. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments. I love reading your guys' comments. I'll get back to you. And I'm always open for discussion. Um, you know, so if you have a video that you would like me to make or you have a question about it, uh, I'd be happy to try to I'd do my best to try to uh, fill that for you. Um, at some point, I got to get some replacement screws for my hats and stock, but um, we're going to do some videos with my hats and my gamo. We got a couple hats since I think we're going to be doing some slug testing with. We got two bull bosses, one's in 22, one's in 25. I got a gamo urban in 22. We'll be doing some tuning and testing with that, see if we can't get some slugs to fly well out of that gun. Um, we've got the FX crown we still haven't brought out yet. That has a 500 mil barrel on it. Um, so we're going to do some different testings. We've got all three lengths of 22 caliber slug liners. We've got a 600 in this gun. My uncle's got a 700 on his impact and we've got a 500 on the crown. Um, so we'll do some more, more testing and see what performs well out of the different liner types um, as a general maybe guideline. Um, Well, that's pretty much about it, guys. I um, hope you enjoyed this. I hope maybe this this gave you some insight into shooting slugs, or at least how I'm going about getting these results. Um, and maybe if you're having some, you know, some tuning inconsistencies with your with your dream line, um, definitely, you know, you're, you're probably going to have to adjust your regulator more than once to get it to sit in the same spot. So, um, just for your information. All right, guys. Later. Have a great day.